Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. Yeah, I got in a fight with my LA Looks hair gel, but you should see the other guy, Perna. And this is the fourth and final AFC West prediction video focusing on the team many of you sub to this channel for, the Denver Broncos. I do plan on trying to break down some other teams over the next few weeks, so come back for that shit. Today, though, I answer the question, did the Broncos get better or worse or stay the same because none of it matters if Vance Joseph is still the head coach? Let's get sports. And please subscribe to this channel if you haven't. If you did sub, click the notification button. That's nice. I do have Big Dick Patreon shout outs for Samuel Thompson, Speed Racer TVG, Kevin Sika, and Laura Link, all $5 donors. And yes, I do have the t-shirt giveaway announcement. So on Patreon, all of my $5 donors got entered in this month's uh, t-shirt giveaway for my That's Good Sports store. I put everybody's name in this hat. And the lucky winner shall be Garrett Bouton. Garrett, you won a shirt. Good job at getting one of my shitty t-shirts. They look, some of them look like this. Okay, yeah, I know I look stupid, but I did evaluate every positional group for the Broncos. The Chiefs in 2017 finished in first place in the AFC West, but most impressively had a five and one division record. The Chargers pulled up in second at nine and seven, the Raiders six and 10, and our beloved Denver Broncos dead last at five and 11. Their worst record since Mark Zuckerberg was Times Man of the Year. There was only one Despicable Me and one Incredibles movie, and Josh McShitface was fired halfway through the season. What does all of that mean for 2018? Well, when the Broncos are bad, it's either a great year or horrible year for Mark Zuckerberg. Nothing in between. I will say, after posting my Raiders video, Raiders fans coming off a 6-10 season and just one winning season since 2002 are a cocky, illogical group of salty fans who may have the lowest football acumen in the NFL. Chiefs fans seem to be the most reasonable, and Chargers fans, well, they didn't even show up and watch the one video I made where I talked very kindly about their team. It's because, like believing lightning never strikes in the same place twice, Chargers fans are also a myth. Never showing up twice to watch a Chargers game in the same season. Now, last season, the Broncos gave up 93 more points than they scored in 2017 a negative 93-point differential. The teams worse than them were the Dolphins, Browns, Giants, Colts, and Texans, which is pretty astonishing when you think about it. The teams that get outscored the most lose the most fucking games. By comparison, other NFL teams that finished 5-11 were the Jets, Bears, and Buccaneers, who were outscored by 86, 56, and 47 points, which to me means the Broncos have to make the biggest leap out of those many struggling teams to be relevant again. The good news is, I think they have the best chance to do that next to maybe the Giants, who should have a better O-line with Saquon, Saquon Barkley and a healthy receiving core, and the Dolphins, who have Ryan Tannenhill back and zero cocaine scandals to start the season, presumably. The reason the Broncos should win more games is because with Case Keenum, the offense should score more points, which means the defense should give up fewer points, and that negative score ratio should flip to the positive for the Broncos instead of the negative 93 like they had. Last season, under Keenum, the Vikings had a plus 130 point differential. The only teams better were the Patriots, Eagles, Jaguars, and Rams. Keenum only threw 22 touchdowns last season, which should tell you all Denver needs to do in 2017 is play smart offensive football, which I believe with Keenum and an emphasis on the run, they will do, while also praying to the dick of Satan that the defense is still a top five or top seven unit. As Bill Belichick has shown us, if you don't make Satan's dick happy, you don't get to the Super Bowl. Nobody knows how to work a red hot fiery dick that will keep you burning for months better than Bill Belichick. Well, and now maybe Nick Foles. Realistically, I can see the Broncos finishing in first place, and I can just as easily see them finishing in last place again. And it's because more than all of the other AFC West teams, there are too many uh, positional groups and coaches that I cannot say are definitely going to be better or worse. 
There's a lot of unknown here. Unlike the Raiders and Chiefs, the Broncos do not have a new head coach or a first year quarterback, which I think is an advantage because I don't think Gruden is a mastermind and I don't trust any first year quarterback not named Bubby Brister. To the coaches, Vance Joseph, Billy Musgrave, and Joe Woods should all be better just by virtue of working together uh, for a second straight year. And special teams coach Tom McMahon should be better by simply not being Brock Olivo. I really think Vance can only be as good as his coordinators, and Joe Woods and Bill Musgrave still have a lot to prove in Denver. So I don't fucking know about the coaches. The offense, uh, quarterback, receivers, and tight ends should be improved. Jake Butt will be on the field, so he'll definitely be better than he was on IR in 2017. The draft added depth at the receiver positions with Cortland Sutton and Deshaun Hamilton. To me, it feels like when Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker were drafted by the Broncos. Either of those guys could be a huge impact player this season and both are primed for long-term success in the NFL with the Broncos. And for the first time, I am excited about the depth behind DT and Emmanuel Sanders. Offensive line. At best, the O-line will be average. And I will sing the name of Gary Zimmerman in praise in the streets of Denver every day during the season for an average O-line. I'm not even close to sold on the fact that Jared Valdir will stay healthy at right tackle, and that if he does get hurt, Minelik Watson will suddenly be good, or that Max Garcia, Connor McGovern, or the local kid Sam Jones is ready to lock down right guard. There will be movement on that line again. Trust me. Uh, I want to believe Garrett Bowles will be better than the 36th ranked tackle in the NFL, but the only thing I am banking on right now is Ron Leary and Matt Paradis. And even those guys have had some injury issues in the past. Conclusion, O-line, inconclusive. The running backs. They have the potential to be better. You know I love D'Angelo Henderson, and I'm excited about Royce Freeman, but the loss of C.J. Anderson without significant upgrades on the offensive line makes this another question mark for me. C.J. would have been a huge asset for Case Keenum in pass protection. The silver lining, though, is C.J. found a way to, to get 1,000 yards last season, and if the quarterback slash passing game is better this year, the running game should open up for these young backs, and I believe Royce Freeman will provide power in short yardage situations. Defense. Defensively, the line should be a top 10 unit in my opinion. Derek Wolf is healthy again. Uh, D Domata Pecco is a solid vet in the middle. And I love Shelby Harris, who finished as the highest graded player on that defensive line. Uh, free agent Clinton McDonald could really help Von Miller by creating interior pass rush pressure, an underrated but highly val valuable skill for a complete D line. The outside backers are stacked with Miller, Barrett, Chubb, maybe Shane Ray, and this guy Jeff Holland, who every media outlet is writing the exact same article about. I don't give a shit about practice in June, but if Holland drops a few quarterbacks this preseason, the Broncos' pass rush could be beyond unstoppable. It could be Axelrod. Axel the inside linebacking core got a nice upgrade with the drafting of Josie Jewell. I think he gives that group with Brandon Marshall, Todd Davis, and Zaire Anderson some very nice depth. And they will be aided by Sua Cravens in coverage situations. Jewel was very good as a coverage backer with six picks in college and zero touchdowns allowed in the red zone in passing situations. He's a guy who has great instincts and dissects plays quickly. If Brandon Marshall stays healthy, the potential for Jewel, Marshall, and Cravens to become formidable against the short passing game is through the roof, but not Axelrod. Axel Watch the show Billions. That, that show is fucking amazing. And that leads me to the safeties. Overall, I think they might be a little bit better. Justin Simmons will be in his third year and was all around the best safety on the team in 2017. Darian Stewart is the savvy vet. Then you have Cravens, Will Parks, and Jamal Carter, which gives that group plenty of depth, especially as nickel linebackers. But the problem with all of those safeties right now is in coverage. They all need to get better in coverage. The Eagles, Rams, Vikings, Titans, Jaguars, Saints, and even the Bills all had at least one safety who was great in pass coverage last season. They were all playoff teams, and uh, this was a glaring area of weakness for the Broncos with Simmons ranked as the 50th best safety in coverage for guys playing at least 50% of the snaps last year. 50th. Minnesota, Buffalo, Seattle, LA, and New England all had two safeties in the top 20. 
Denver had won in the top 50 in coverage. Justin Simmons has to become that guy. He has to be a top 10 coverage safety. And if Will Parks doesn't want to get nudged out by Jamal Carter and Sua Cravens, he needs to get a lot better against the pass as well. Now, without Aqib Tlaib, I'm not sure if those safeties will get tested more or less this season. His loss, though, makes the corner group and safety group weaker. I personally think Bradley Roby will play well. He's coming off his best season in terms of coverage. He's ready to make that leap. I, I believe that. But will he be as good as Aqib Tlaib was? I don't know. What I do know is the whole Roby leaves means Tremaine Brock better be fucking amazing. Now, he's been both very good and very bad at his position throughout his career. My concern is not about Roby being good, it's about no longer having three top corners on the field at all times. That's what made the Broncos secondary special, and right now, that is no longer a guarantee. It would be very hard for special teams to be worse. Uh, Marquette King was a major upgrade at the punting position. That alone, if holds true, will make the Broncos defense better, as will fewer turn turnovers by Case Keenum. Those two things can help improve the points allowed by the Broncos defense this season. Last year, the Denver D was pretty good uh, in yards allowed, but were poor in points allowed, and a big reason for that was because they were put in shitty situations by the offense every five fucking minutes. Special teams was bad, uh, but kickers usually kind of live on an island, right? So I don't know why Brandon McManus dropped from making 85% of his field goals uh, in 2016 and 2015 to 75%. I expect him to bounce back just because guys named Brandon never stay down too long. You can punch us, you can kick us, but we'll get back up. And yeah, we get punched and kicked a lot. Luckily, I don't see the punt returner being worse than Isaiah McKenzie was in 2017, even if the punt returner is Isaiah McKenzie in 2018. Jordan Taylor's coming off double hip surgery, so I wouldn't count on him to be back there again, or even on the team unless he gets some sort of IR designation. Basically, we have to hope McKenzie can catch the ball, or that Brendan Langley will emerge as the punt returner, or that Philip Lindsay, I think the guy we're all rooting for, makes the team because he proves he can return punts in addition to kickoffs. Now all that information is great, but everything comes down to Case Keenum. Case Keesum. Keenum, I'm sorry. Get your Keesum shirts at the That's Good Sports store on that'sgoodsports.com. If he plays as well as he did in 2017, this is what happens. The wide receivers are more productive, the line is better, the running game opens up, the team punts less, and the defense is better because their QB isn't crippling them several times a game with turnovers, which allows the defense to rest between series. Even if Keenum doesn't play quite as well as he did in 2017, he still has a chance to drastically improve this Broncos team. Think about that. You change jobs, you go to a new company, and you can perform worse than you did at your old company and still make the new company a lot fucking better. That's the situation Case Keenum is in. And the thing that makes me even more optimistic is that the Vikings offensive line had plenty of struggles in 2017, which I have mentioned. This is what Pro Football Focus wrote about the Vikings line. The team ended the campaign with 154 pressures allowed on 572 passing plays, but it easily could have been more without the help of quarterback Case Keenum escaping sacks at an incredible rate. I believe the Broncos line gave up like 207 pressures, but I'm banking on Keenum to escape sacks at an incredible rate again. The other thing the Broncos do have going for them is run blocking. Uh, they were ranked uh, 11th best in the league last year, and the Vikings were actually fifth worst. Uh, the Vikings right tackle Rashad Hill was tied on Pro Football Focus with Garrett Bowles as the 36th worst, worst tackle in the league for tackles that play at least 50% of the snaps. So Keenum is already well versed in almost having his fucking head taken off every play. And like some eyeliner, lipstick, and about five whiskeys, he should make the line look better than it truly is. Keenum extends plays, magically avoids sacks, is mobile in the pocket, and terrific under pressure. That's why Elway and Kubiak are high on him, and it's why I started to pay attention to him last season, way before I ever thought he'd be a Denver Bronco. He is the secret weapon for this team, because an improvement at his position will trickle down to every position. I'm predicting the Broncos to finish 
in second place behind the Chargers this season. Areas of concern for me are the line and the secondary, but I think I've pointed out every other position group should, well, could be better. Uh, the caveat is Vance Joseph and team chemistry. I believe this team, if they stay healthy, can gel, but I feel like the first half of the season could be riddled with growing pains and that the second half of the season will see them on the rise to a 10 and six finish. Uh, probably getting a wild card spot and then definitely winning the Super Bowl after they destroy the Chargers in the playoffs on their way to glory. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I do have a second channel, That's Good Broncos, for all you Broncos fans. I publish my podcast there every week. I have two podcasts now. One just for my patrons on Patreon, and then a regular podcast that talks about the Broncos and the NFL. It's on Podbeam or iTunes. Go rank it, please, for the Denver Broncos. Fuck you, phone! Ha! <laughs>